<laughs> your microphone is muted. Yeah, Pastor Samuel, can you check uh, Baba's microphone is muted? Feel me up, God. Thank you. 
for your grace. Thank you for this moment of hope, oh Lord, we love you. Welcome everyone to this moment of hope. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to see our beautiful and precious faces. And also to all the viewers on Facebook, I want to welcome you to this moment of hope. And I remember this hope is the plan of God for us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that God himself is a God of hope. So we want to encourage you to share this link to as many people you can share it with on various social media so that they can be part of this moment of hope. Let us pray. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you open our eyes, open our understandings to understand the scripture. Speak to us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, glorify the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you, we give you praise, O oh Lord. Father, please confirm your word with signs following. According to the Bible, so that you are working with the disciples and you're confirming their words, they are testifying, preaching this gospel with signs following. So let it be, O oh God, today. Let's so be saved. Let's so be established in grace. And let there be signs and wonders, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Amen. Amen. So the one we'll start today, remember we'll be going through how God wants us to read the scriptures. And for the two weeks ago, we'll be looking at how Jesus himself read the scriptures. We're looking at how he read the scripture part one when he was 12 years old and also during his temptation. And last week we looked at how he read the gospel, how he read the scriptures in his ministry. And God himself has given us the entire Bible, the old scripture, both the Old Testament and New Testament with one purpose. And we need to understand that purpose. So in reading the, 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 the scripture, God wants us to anaginosco it. It is when we anaginosco the scripture that spring forth our faith, that is God kind of faith, the kind of faith that God wants us to have. Hallelujah, glory to God. And that's what we want to look at today. We want to continue in part three of how Jesus read the scriptures during his crucifixion. We want to look at it, how he read the scriptures, how he anaginosco the scriptures, even to the end of his crucifixion. And the Bible establishes that God is a God of hope. And God is calling all of us all over the world into this great hope. And he wants us to abound in this hope because this hope does not disappoint. Hallelujah. And God extend this hope unto us when we were powerless, when we were weak, when we have no strength, when we cannot help ourselves. So it does not matter what you may going through today. You may look like you're weak. You may look so powerless. You may look as if you can't even help yourself. Nobody can help you. God is calling you again today to this moment of hope. And the Bible establishes that Christ in us is that hope of glory that does not disappoint. Now, let's look at it. How he read the scriptures during his crucifixion so that that can help us also. Remember, reading is not just like a, you take a Bible and you are reading. That is not what the Bible is talking about, how God wants us to read. 
God wants us to anaginosco, to understand the purpose of the scripture, so that you will read the Bible according to the purpose of the scripture. Glory to God. And we say the whole Bible itself is given us for one purpose, that we might believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And glory to God. And today we help us to see the purpose why God sent the Messiah. The purpose why Jesus came to this earth. He did not come here to play or to have fun with us. He came with a purpose to resolve our fundamental problems. So whatever you are going through that you think is problem, God loves you so much. So he poured out his love by the Holy Ghost upon us by giving us the Messiah. So now let's see how Jesus and the Gnosko scriptures during his betrayal, you know, when they were having supper, the last supper with his disciples. Now he said that one of them is going to betray him. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 33. I mean, verse 23 to 24. Matthew chapter 26, we want to look at how he anaginosco the scripture in his betrayal. Matthew chapter 26, verse 23 and 24. And he answered and said, he that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. When the disciple were asking, master, who is going to betray you among us? He said, all of you, one of you is a devil. One of you will betray me. Now he said, he's the one who dish his hand into the, into the food and eat with me would betray him. Verse 24, he said, the son of man go ahead as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. Now let's look at it. Here, he said, he's going as it is written of him. What was he written? At this moment, Jesus was now reading the book of Psalm, Psalm 41, verse 9, that the one, his best friend, the close person to him, who, who, who hit with him, who died with him, will betray the Messiah. And Jesus understood the purpose of the scripture. So he did not distort the, the scripture. He did not misuse it or misplace it. Now he applied this, he applied this scripture, Psalm 41, verse 9, that someone will betray him among his own close friends. And that was what happened to Judas Iscariot, even though his name was not mentioned as the one that would betray, but he allowed the devil to use him. Glory to God. Now let's look at how also Jesus read the book of Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, what was the prophet, how he anaginosco it. Now let's also continue in the same Matthew, because today we shall be looking at the old Matthew chapter 26, because that gave us the picture of his crucifixion. Now in Matthew chapter 26, verse 31, then said Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Now here, after Jesus have made this known to them that they confess, the disciple confess that now you are no more speaking in parable. You are now speaking plainly in the language they could understand. So now we believe that you come from the father. And now Jesus said, and now you believe that I've come from the Father. I said, well, I wanted to know that Zechariah here will be fulfilled, that shepherd will be smite, and all the sheep will scatter abroad, because that is what is written. Now we can see that Jesus understood the purpose of the scripture, and he understood what Zechariah was saying in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 7. Zechariah was prophesying about him, and glory to God. But the anyone who picked the Bible and read Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7 might not understand the purpose what Zechariah was speaking in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But Jesus anaginosco the scripture. So when the time comes, now he confessed that. He quoted it. It is written. It is written. What was he written? Written that Jesus as the Messiah will be smite. <laughs> Glory to God. And all the disciples we scatter abroad. Now let's look at it. When he carried the cross, as he carried the cross, was going to Golgotha. Now the Bible says certain women and some people, company of people, they were mourning for him. They were weeping. You know, they were so emotional. They were looking at it. Oh, for adventure, some of his so close friends to his family, who were closer to Joseph and Mary, might be among them. You know, women are so emotional. They could show their, their compassions. 
right, towards the innocent. And many of them could see that, no, Jesus was innocent because he has done so good to them. And now they were weeping, crying for him, that the one they thought is going to be their Messiah, now is going to be crucified, is going to die, and they were crying. Now, let's see how Jesus and Aginosco, right, his response to their mourning, his response to their weeping, you know, he did not say, no, no, just stop sweeping. No, he anaginosco by quoting the scripture. Now, let's look at it. Luke chapter 23, the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 28. But Jesus turning unto them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. Verse 29, for behold, the days are coming in the which they shall see, blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bury, and the paths which never give suck. Verse 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the east, cover us. Now, what was Jesus saying at this moment? Jesus was anaginosco, the book of the Isaiah, the prophet. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 9, and also the book of Hosea, the prophet. Hosea, the prophet, the Asian prophet. Hosea chapter 10, verse 8. If you go there and look at it, now you can see that Jesus understood the purpose of what Isaiah was saying in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 9. He knew that the whole Bible was written for the purpose for himself. Glory to God as the Messiah. So, so Jesus knew what Hosea chapter 10 verse 8 was saying. So he understood it. He anaginosco it. And that is why when the time comes, he begins to apply them. Glory to God. Now we can see how Jesus read the scripture. Now he says, they will say, because Hosea chapter 10 verse 8 talks about that, that in the last day they shall say, Mount shift should fall on them, and glory to God, because of the days of the law. Now, we can see that why people are just money, right? People read the scripture, they can just read it like a letter, like ordinary literature. But Jesus did not read the scripture like ordinary letters because he understood. And God also wants us to anaginosco the scripture. In anaginosco the scripture, scripture now becomes life unto us. And glory to God. It becomes life unto us because we understood the purpose of it. Now, let's look at it also. When he was crucified on the cross, so the Bible said that when it was 12 noon, there was total darkness, total darkness in the old, in the old world at that moment. Then Jesus now cried out in Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Helai, Helai, la master back to me. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Glory to God. Even in his crucifixion, he was still an agnosco description. Now, what was he saying here? At this moment, he was reading the book of Psalm. Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, many of us, including myself, right, we might read Psalm 22, verse 1, and we thought David was talking to himself. We might think, oh, David was going through problems, and that is why David was crawling unto God and said, God, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Saul is chasing my life. No, at that moment, David, being a prophet, was not speaking about himself. He was talking about how Messiah will be forsaken because he carried our punishment upon himself, because the Messiah had become seen on the cross for us. Glory to God. So, so, I, so David was speaking because he was a prophet by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, and Aginosco, the psalm, and he quoted the psalm. He said, my God, my God, why do you forsake me? And glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's also go to the book of John. John chapter 19, verse 28. We're looking at how Jesus, and Aginosco, how he read the scriptures during his crucifixion. Now, let's look at John chapter 19, verse 28. Now, after this, when Jesus realized that everything was now completed, <laughs> after he, on the cross, he was crucified. He now realized that everything has been completed. He said, in order to fulfill the scripture, which scriptures? <laughs> now, he said, I am thirsty. Remember, Jesus did not just cry on the cross, I am thirsty. The Bible says, because in order for the scriptures to be fulfilled, which scripture? And that was still the book of Psalm, Psalm 22, verse 15, and Psalm 69, verse 21. If you read it, you, you, you can be able to understand. So Jesus realized that now everything he came to do has been achieved. 
the purpose has been achieved. He has accomplished the task in which the Father sent him to do in order for the scripture to be fulfilled, in order for the scripture. So in Amagdinosco, he read the scripture and he cried, I am thirsty. Glory to God. So now this is an indication for us to see how God wants us to anaginosco the scripture. So because the word of God himself is life. So Bible said that is life unto all the flesh of those that find it. If you find the word of God, it becomes life unto you. And it can only become life when you understand the purpose. Being glory to God. Glory to God. Now let's also go. We continue in book of Luke. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. That was the final word that he wanted to, after he had accomplished everything from the, through the cross, now he cried out. He said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Now, even to the end of his life on the cross, Jesus still reading the scripture, still anaginosco the scripture. So here he was quoting also the book of Psalm, Psalm 31, verse 5. He was still reading the book of Psalm 31, verse 5, so that we can see that the old scripture, both the old testament, right? The old scripture from Genesis to Malachi was written for one purpose. <laughs> Glory to God, so that we might believe about the Messiah to come. So the God raised prophets to write everything about him so that the gospel might be preached to us, hallelujah, so that we might believe the gospel. So now we can see how Jesus began to read the book of Psalm 31 verse 5, even unto the end. He never distorted the word. He never misused it. He never misplaced it because he anaginosco it. He understand it. Glory to God. And God wants us also to anaginosco the scripture in our work with God. And that's what brings salvation unto us when we can believe the purpose why God allowed the old scriptures to be written. Now, many of us has been deceived by religion. Many of us has been deceived by the elite of the religions. The, the, the theologians are so good, but many people have been deceived by the traditions of the fathers, by the various doctrines in which God does not give us. God only gave us the scriptures. <laughs> but out of the scriptures, we turn the scripture to become doctrinal issues for us. We turn it to become a religious book. Bible is not a religious book. Hallelujah. It is a gift of God to the old mankind that we might believe the purpose why he allowed it to be written. And now we can see how Jesus himself, being the Messiah, unto the end of his life, still reading the scripture. He says, I commit my own spirit into your hand, and he breathed his last and died. Now, let's look at it today. I want us to begin to look at this during his crucifixion, how he anaginosco the scripture. Now, in the book of John, John chapter 17, before Jesus died, and glory to God before he died. This is so important for us. Whatever you are, that you are listening to this moment of hope, that you feel like giving up in life, maybe because you are going through trouble time, you are going through hard time, or you have been disappointed, you don't even believe there is God, or because you have been attacked by COVID-19, right? And it seems as if your loved ones are being, being becomes a victim of coronavirus. So you, you seem as if oh, I pray to God, yet my loved ones still die. So because of that, you are losing heart, you are losing hope, you are losing faith. Now God is calling you. God is bigger than coronavirus. God is bigger than every situation you might be going through. Hallelujah. So what God has for us is go beyond COVID-19, right? COVID-19 may be a challenge for us, but that is not our fundamental problems. So the reason, the purpose why God sent the Messiah, the purpose why God allowed the old scripture to be written is for our own sake. It's not for his sake. It's for our sake that we might understand his love for us. And he want to demonstrate this love because in the beginning, he created us in his own image and likeness. And because our great father, our great parent, our grandparent, Adam and Eve, they disobey God. They could not hold on to the commandment of God. They could not lampano the covenant of God unto the end. So they were separated from God because of their disobedience. They allowed Satan to deceive them out of the love of God. They allowed Satan to, 
could shut them out of this purpose of God. And God still loves us because we did not create ourselves. Hallelujah. The creations of man does not originate from our own imagination. It was not out of our own innovation. It was not out of our own creativity. No, it comes from God's innovations and creativity. It is God's plan to make man in his own image and likeness so that we become a spiritual being. Glory to God. So, and because we've we, we lost out of that purpose. God still wants us back into that hope. And that is why God began to promise that he will send the Messiah. When Messiah comes, he will redeem us back. He will bring us back to this heart of the Father. Oh, glory to God. He will bring us back to this wonderful love of the Father so that we can become one with God. And when we are with God, nothing will be a problem again. Hallelujah. We can be able to manifest and manifest the glory and the presence of God in our various lives. So don't give up. God is inviting you to come to this hope. But how do we come to this hope? Now, let's look at it. Jesus, towards the end of his life, was able to anagnosco the scripture. Now, before he died on the cross, in John chapter 17, he began to pray. Now, let's look at some key points of his prayer, how he anagnosco even the scripture during his prayer. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, Verse 3 to 4. Verse 3 was revealing to us what eternal life is all about. That eternal life is for us to believe the only God and the, the, the Savior, Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one who he has sent. That is eternal life. Believing God the Father. And how do you believe God the Father? By believing the one he has sent. The saint one, the anointed one. That is Messiah. That is Christos. Glory to God. So when we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, then we are believing God the Father, and that is eternal life. Now, in verse 4, you know, so he said, I have finished the work. He said, Father, I have finished the work. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have finished. The Greek word for I have finished there is etelehosa. He said, Father, I have etelehosa, the work you have given me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's thank God. Let's praise God for this. He has finished. He said, Father, I have finished the work. <laughs> what work? Now, we can see that the reason why the life of Jesus from his birth all through to the end was according to the scripture. He lived his life to fulfill the whole purpose of the scripture. And now when he saw that he has accomplished it, he said, Father, I have accomplished it. I've eteleuza it. Now, what is it, eteleuza? He came for a purpose and he needs to finish this work. Not works, right? Work, not plural, singular, one work. It came to resolve our fundamental problem. God purposely sent Jesus, he sent the Messiah to us to accomplish that work of bringing the whole humankind back to God. Whether an African or Asian or Europeans or Americans or Latin Americans or Oceanians, God's purpose is to bring us back, not only human beings, even the whole creation itself. Because the Bible says that the whole creation is also groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Because they were also waiting, they were also going through suffering from the separations of man from God. Because the whole creation itself became a victim of the separation from God. And that is why we can see various calamity that is happening. Many people do ask questions. If God is, is God is alive, why does God allow suffering? Why will he allow flood to kill people in Philippines? Why will he allow flood to destroy many nations? Why will he allow Israel and Pakistan, I mean, to be fighting and killing each other? No, it's not God. God is not the originator of suffering. Why? Because the creation itself has become a victim of separation from God for us to see the intent of our problems. That our problems go beyond our capacity and our ability. We cannot resolve it. Technology cannot resolve it. Development cannot, scientists cannot resolve it. There is no philosophical understanding that they can resolve our fundamental problems of separation from God. It's so critical that it's not only human beings suffering from it. Nature itself is suffering from that. And now here, Jesus said, Father, I have eternally who said, I have finished the work. He finished that work. And he confessed that I have finished it. I have finished to, to manifest you as the father, as a loving father to the old man. Glory to God. So he ate the it. Now let's look at it. Verse 19. This is so wonderful. Most often, 
we can see the life of Jesus. Now let's look at what he said in verse 19. He says, it is for their sakes that I sanctify myself so that they too may be sanctified by the truth. Now let's look at it. Jesus came, he sanctified himself. To sanctify means to separate himself, to set apart, to fulfill a particular task. Now he is God himself. But for our sake, not for his sake, not for the sake of God the Father, not for the sake of God the Holy Spirit, not for the sake of God the Son, no, it's for our own sake. He said, for their sake, I sanctify myself. Glory to God. We have no choice. We must not allow the devil to keep on deceiving us that God hates us. We must not allow sin, the bondage of sin and worldliness to deceive us. No, God loves us so much that Jesus sanctified himself for our sake, for my sake. He, sank, he set himself apart to be able to eteleusha the work of God for us. Glory to God. He said, I sanctify myself for their sake so that we also can be sanctified by the truth. Now, look at verse 20. Not only those who believe now, he said, I ask not only on behalf of this man who have believed me that I am the Messiah. I said, no, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their message. Hallelujah. So this love of God is so, so encompassing. It encompasses, it's an inclusive love of God that includes all human race, both black and white and green and yellow, all human race, all over the continents. The billions of the people are all inclusive in this love of God. He said, not only for those who believe now, not only for Tom, Thomas has believed, it's not only for Thomas, even those who will believe in me through the message of Thomas, in which Thomas would testify, be a witness to me as a bear witness that I am the Messiah who have resolved their fundamental problems. He said, then also they can enjoy, they can be able to enjoy this demonstration of the love of God, the irresistible love of the Father. Glory to God. He said, He sanctified Himself for us. He's for our sake. So don't reject this love of God. Don't reject this hope of God. God is calling you to this hope. Hallelujah. Now we can see, another thing that we can see is that in John chapter 19, verse 30, as I'm rounding up this to this message, how Jesus and I did not the scripture, he during his crucifixion. Now in verse 30, John chapter 19, verse 30. Hallelujah, this is so wonderful. Now remember, when he was praying in John chapter 17, he says, I have finished the work. I have finished, I have et telehusa the work. At that moment, he have not yet been crucified. He have not yet died. But he said, I have finished it. But the work is not yet finished. It's not yet finished, but he has finished it. Hallelujah. He has finished it. Now, now, let's look at it. On the cross, towards the end, he cried in verse, verse 30, John chapter 19, verse 30. So when Jesus, therefore, had received the finger, he said, it is finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, Father, I've the work. Now on the cross, say, Father, Father, it is finished now. I have finished it and it is finished. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a great love. Jesus finished the work and the work itself is finished. What did he finish? Satan is finished. The control of Satan over your life is finished. He's finished, Jesus finished it, and the work itself is finished. The devil knew it, that it is finished. The control of sin over your life is also finished, hallelujah. So sin will no more control your life. If only you can enter into this great moment of hope of God. Remember, God himself is a God of hope, hallelujah. So God is calling all of us to this great hope that Jesus finished it. Not only that he finished it, he finished every barrier, the obstacles, that in us from going to God freely, to have a free access to the presence of the Father. So we don't need prophet. We don't need apostle. We don't need any pastor. We don't need any teacher or evangelist not to become a middleman between us and the Father. We can now go to God freely. 
Hallelujah. We don't need any, no protocol. No more protocol. The protocol has been removed. We can go back to God. We can carry our emotions, our feelings, everything. We can go back to God. We can cry unto him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we are no more alone. We don't need to take visa before we enter his presence. We don't need to take a, we don't need passport. All what you need is just your faith in believing the purpose of the scripture. And what is the purpose of the scripture? That we may believe that Jesus, he is the Messiah, he is the Christ, who of Eteleosa the work, and also the work itself is Telesta, it is finished. Hallelujah. So you have no choice to remain in the bondage of Satan. Don't remain in that bondage of Satan. Don't let the devil keep on deceiving you that life is so difficult. Life is so hard and you are struggling every day to resolve the daily challenges of life. Don't do that. Don't live your life like that. Your life goes beyond daily challenges. Your life is much worthier. It's much higher. It's much of great value than the daily challenges. So don't go through that daily challenges alone. Go into the love of the Father. Go into the presence of the Father. Go to your Father, express yourself. Don't do it alone. He said, come unto me, all you that are living and every living. He said, I will give you rest. He want to give us rest. Don't carry that body alone. Don't carry that yoke. He want to give us his own body that is so light and so easy. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we can see in summary that the whole life of Jesus, the whole life of Jesus reflect and show us the fulfillment of the old scriptures from A to Z of his life was all revealing unto us the scriptures, the purpose of the scripture. And God wants us to anagnosco it. So if you are a pastor, if you are an evangelist, if you are an apostle, if you are a prophet, you have one assignment. You have one work. One work is to go and testify, to go and bear witness to this by using the old scripture to let people be able to see that Jesus is the Christ and they can be able to understand and believe, and believe, believing not according to the way they want to believe. God has not called us to believe the way we want to believe. Mm, that's okay. That's Thomas talking, at least for me, I just believe in my own way. No. Don't believe in your whole way. For me, oh no, I think the scriptures is this. Now, let's look at it. Many of the time when we read the book of Psalm, we personalize it. Yeah, it's good to personalize the scripture, but don't personalize the scripture when you don't understand the purpose. It's not going to work. It's not going to work for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is a misplacement of the scripture. That is a misuse and a distorted of the word of God, of the scripture. It won't work. Now, you might say, oh, but pastor... Every time when I confess like that positive words and I confess, I'll be seeing it working in my life. No, it's not the scripture working, right? Things are just working because that is how God wants it to work for you, not because it's not the scripture working. Glory to God. The scripture has a purpose. It's only when we submit ourselves to the purpose of the scripture that the scripture becomes light onto our path. It becomes light and lamp onto our feet. Hallelujah. So, David understood that, and that's why David, every time as a prophet, as a psalmist of Israel, was able to sing in the spirit. Hallelujah. He said, I see the Lord sitting at my right hand, saying unto my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Glory to God. So he can understand the coming of Messiah. He understood. When God was speaking to him concerning Solomon, David knew, he realized the difference between Solomon and the seed, the Messiah to come. He understood that, hallelujah. And the Bible says many of them, they desire to, to witness the coming of Messiah. They, they desire it. Even Father Abraham desired it, hallelujah. They understood that all their life, all their life was not a role model for us. The, all their life, gospel was being preached to them and they were able to see it in the spirit and they rejoiced. So Jesus said, even your father Abraham, saw my days and he rejoiced. He was glad. He was glad. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that we can understand that the whole scripture is written with one purpose. And it's only when we begin to believe the purpose of the scripture that the scripture becomes life unto us. So today, I want us to know that Jesus has etelehosaid and he is tetelesta. He etelehosaid and the work itself is tetelesta. That is, he has finished the work and the work itself is finished. So we want to have hope in this. Cast all your bodies on this. Begin to see your life bigger than the situations you go through. Begin to see your life bigger than this coronavirus. 
go back again. Let's go back again into the purpose of the scripture for us. Remember, he sanctified himself for your sake, for my sake, for all of us sake. So we don't, don't cry, don't weep, no, don't weep because you don't have money. And you think money is the definitions of your own, of your own destiny. You think not having money so is the is the reality of your life. No, that's not the reality of your life. Hallelujah. If you can see the love of the Father, if you can see this great hope, the Bible says that Christ is not is the hope of glory. It goes beyond material things, it goes beyond money. Hallelujah. And today I pray that the Lord might open our understanding and grant us grace to be able to anagnosco the scripture from today so that whenever you want to have your personal devotion, whenever you want to have your personal Bible study, as you are reading the scripture, either from Old Testament or New Testament, you are reading with the purpose of the scripture and your faith spring up because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and the hearings of the word about Christ. That is the meaning of it. The faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. It means the faith comes by hearing and the hearing about the Christ, about the purpose of the scripture. Glory to God. So today we're going to pray together, wherever you are. You want to say, Lord, here I am. Pour grace upon my life. Lord, I truly want to anagnosco the scripture. The same way Jesus read the scripture. I also want to read the scriptures in the same light so that the scripture becomes light onto my path and lap onto my feet. Hallelujah. And that is when our life can be used for his glory. That is when we can help these generations because generations have been corrupted. Religious has corrupted us. So many philosophical understanding and definition and interpretation of the Bible has corrupted our generation. And that is why we can see diverse things, diverse things. This one, we preach something different. This one, we say something different. This one, we say something different. We don't even know, understand what is the purpose of the old scriptures. And God wants to raise a generation who can anagnosco the scripture so that we can be able to help these, our generations to have a true and a biblical faith in Jesus' name. We're going to go into the worship time and to prayer in Jesus' name. The Lord give us the grace as we want to invite Baba. Baba, let's hear your voice. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Baba, we're waiting for you. Are you there? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We worship you, God. We want to bless your name. We want to say, Lord, pour grace upon my life. Grace to Anna Ginosco, the scripture. Please to be able to believe, oh God, the purpose of the scripture. Open my eyes, open my mind, oh God. Lord, pour your grace upon my life so that I can also read the scriptures like the way Jesus read the scripture, even in his serious crucifixion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. It's right I I surrender all. I surrender all. All to so be my I surrender. I surrender. Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus.
to understand the purpose of the scriptures. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cause your grace, O oh God, upon our life to be able to read the scriptures the way Jesus read the scriptures. Father, we pray for the spirit of wisdom, our revelation, the knowledge of you, so that the eyes of understanding be enlightened, O oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, for all those who are there who are run away from you they've give up on you but they want to come back to this great hope today they truly want to believe that truly jesus is the Messiah, that he has the old rock he has resolved every problems every obstacles has been removed and they want to come back to go freely lord as they are believing today lord pour your grace upon your life establish them in this grace of god because salvation comes only by when we hear this gospel and believe truly that Jesus is the Messiah and he has finished it. At the last time, he finished it so that Satan will no more control us. So as we believe we are translated from the kingdom of darkness, from the power and control of Satan onto the kingdom of his dear son in whom he loved. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray. Grace to be able, O oh Lord, to go deeper. So that our eyes of understanding be enlightened, so that we know the hope of your callings upon our life, oh God, so that we might be able to know the greater riches of yours, the glory of your riches in Christ Jesus, and your power that is working in the life of those who truly believe in you. Lord, grant us this spirit of wisdom. Grant, oh God, this spirit of revelation. In the name of Jesus, oh God, open our understanding, open our understanding every second. Every minute of our life, oh God, help us, oh God, to hold on to the hand. Help us, oh God, to be able to read the scriptures, oh God, in the, in the light of this, oh God, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, for everyone that you are there, you are going through a hard time. Let this great hope becomes a reality in your life, becomes a reality in your situations, becomes a reality in your home. And for as many that are sick as a result of this COVID-19, I pray in the name of Jesus for the mercy of the Lord upon your life, upon your home, that as you are believed, let there be manifestations of his grace of healings upon you in the name of Jesus. We pray for all the nations of the earth. We ask for the mercy of the, of the Lord upon the whole world. We pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that as many people that are rising from darkness to light, because you are the light, that whoever that believes in you will not walk in darkness. I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you release your grace upon nations of the earth. Bless your name, Father. Use our life for your glory. We restore you, Lord. Help us not to misuse and misplace the scriptures. Oh God. Help us, oh Lord, that this scripture becomes life unto us every day of our life. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adorations. Bless your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, today. I want to bless God for your life. Thank you so much for the times you're able to create from uh, Africa. Thank you so much, Pastor Aboya uh, from Philippines, Pastor Gladys, Pastor Shalom, Pastor Joanna, Pastor Gladys Delos, uh, Vic. And every other one, thank you so much, even all the way from uh, South America, uh, our old missionary Luzma, thank you so much for making time. We appreciate you, Jimena and Katie. Thank you so much. I know it's very early in El Salvador and Mexico, but you're able to wake up to be able to participate. And also from Nepal, from Nepal. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Pankaj. And we can also see uh, Pastor Rajnesh, Pastor Rajnesh, thank you so much. And from Bangladesh, 
from Bangladesh, Esther Amita. Thank you, God, for your life. From India, Joy Priya. Joy Priya, we bless God for you. From Uganda, thank you, uh, Suzanne. Suzanne, thank you so much. Bless you. Uh, also, want to thank God for Samtech Televisions from uh, Ghana and Pastor Samuel Gansa. Hallelujah. We appreciate God for you. Our own Baba, oh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And to all our viewers on Facebook, bless your name. Thank you, Banabas, Banaba Pro. Bless God for you, just me. I can see you from India. We love you so much. And uh, today, we're able to look at how Jesus read the scriptures during his crucifixion. And by the grace of God, we shall continue again next week on the movement of four. We shall be looking at how Jesus read the scriptures finally after his resurrections, so that that becomes a life unto us. And please, let's hold on to this. Let's hold on to this. Thank you so much, Sister Bena Gabuyo. Bless God for you. And also Pastor Isaac Nikala from Uganda, who lives in Korea. My own friend from Korea. Yeah, Yeri. Yeah, Sherry, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And also from Malaysia, Pastor David. Pastor David from Malaysia. Thank you so much. We love you. Amen. Thank you. So we shall continue again next week by the grace of God. And uh, please, let's share this. Uh, this link after this meeting, let's share to help many people in our various uh, uh, platform, whether in Instagram or Facebook, let's, let's share on WhatsApp, right? You don't even need to know the people, you could just share it, it's a way of evangelizing other people. And I believe strongly that when God begin to help us to anagnosco the scripture, we can see how our life will become a blessings to our generations. So Christ is coming again, and we are preparing ourselves for him. Glory to God. So remember, movement of hope comes your way every Thursdays. Every Thursdays comes your way, 7 p.m. Korean time and 10 a.m. Ghana time. And that's going to be 12, 11 a.m. Nigerian time. I think I made a mistake. I gave somebody the wrong time in Nigeria. I think that's why she couldn't join. I gave her 12 noon instead of 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. If you hear my voice, Sister Junad, I'm so sorry about that. So please convert the time to your country's time, right? 7 p.m. Korean time, 10 a.m. Ghana time. So on this note, we want to say we love you, Mananta, as we're going to hear the voice of Baba. I want to say we love you, her. Thank you so much, and see you next week on Moment of Hope. I can go back, can go back to the way I used to be before your presence came and stayed. I can go back, I can go back to the way I used to be before your presence came and stayed. Oh, yeah.
Thank you. 